yeah. back hi so this is sort of the second part of things I've got my potatoes on the boil already doing their thing uh, which is for a different part of the recipe but yeah uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make the tomato curry uh, now this is gonna get really awesome because what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a bunch of uh, oil this is rapeseed oil you can use ghee as well it's absolutely fine I'm just gonna use oil because um, I don't want the flavor of ghee in this um, we're gonna start with some oil then we're gonna go in with some uh, mustard seeds which is this one this little bad boy from my uh, little box of spices we're gonna go in with some mustard seeds and we're gonna go with, in with some asafoetida as well uh, and we're also gonna add in uh, a bit of green chili uh, I'm adding in one dry chili because I just want it a little bit spicier uh, and we're gonna add in some curry leaves some fenugreek seeds uh, and some cumin seeds as well so as you can tell it's like a really spicy base and once that base starts building up we're gonna chuck in some gram flour um, this is about three or four tablespoons worth um, which you've seen me use before which is this one um, so basically we're gonna start with like a little bit of a roux uh, and we're gonna get it to the point where it's quite like brown and nice and flavorful um, and then we're gonna add in uh, a can of chopped tomatoes uh, and some tomato paste as well so this is where we start building up the flavor of the tomatoes um, once that starts then we're gonna throw in some red chili powder and some turmeric uh, and then that's kind of our uh, liquor really to, to stew a bunch of our vegetables uh, as I said before I'm gonna add in some potatoes I've got some green beans in here I've got some uh, broccoli I've got some carrot as well uh, you can add okra you can add parsley you can add whatever the hell whatever, whatever you've got in your fridge really um, it's, it's, it's like I said before it's a very forgiving uh, recipe so I'm just gonna start with like a bunch of oil um, it looks like a lot but I'm making a lot of food here uh, and I'm just gonna give it a second to kind of just get up to temperature because uh, you want the oil ripping hot and um, to be fair I should have just started it um, <laughs> before I started speaking but uh, there you go um, for your mustard seeds specifically um, so we're gonna start with the mustard seeds the cumin seeds some curry leaves and some acid potato um, and the way a really nice way to check that the oil is come out temperature is you just get a mustard seed and chunk it in uh, and it's got nothing, no bubbles, nothing, right? So that, that, that's going to take a couple of minutes to come out to temperature, um, which is fine. That's why God made coffee. Um, I hear that boiling, which is completely unrelated. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add my 15 minutes at this point. Yeah, ignore that. That's not for this one, because like I'm trying to like shorten the amount of uh, time I'm spending doing these videos, because you know, hour long video is, uh, nobody's going to watch that, is there, are they? Um, so really good, really good question. I know what you're thinking. How much to add, right? Should I add a quarter of a teaspoon? Should I add half a teaspoon? Um, should I add a teaspoon's worth? Um, so the, uh, what I'd recommend in that case is like different spices have different strengths. Um, like for something like turmeric or asafoetida, I would use as little as possible because this stuff, at least the stuff I've bought, is pretty potent. Um, whereas for something like mustard seeds or coriander powder or cumin powder, Use as much as you want. I mean, I don't 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 go in like heap tablespoonfuls, you know. But uh, half a teaspoon or a teaspoon is not really gonna gonna hurt anyone. Um, so we're gonna do another oil check. Still nothing. Uh, John, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I am gonna come back in uh, one minute. And we're back. Cool. So oil is really hot now. Um, as you can see, there's you know little plumes of smoke coming, um, so we're gonna kind of turn it down a little bit, uh, and we're gonna go in with like a handful of uh, mustard seeds. We're gonna go in with a handful of cumin seeds. We're gonna go in with a handful of curry leaves. Uh, we're gonna go in with a handful of fenugreek seed uh, and we're gonna go in with a pinch full of asafoetida uh, and we're gonna add our green chilies ooh the smell I'm gonna add our red chilies off and that's gonna give that a little bit of a stir These spices don't take very long to cook, which is a really good thing, because now we're gonna add our 
roux. And we're gonna start making our roux basically, which is as soon as we add, oh, come on, as soon as we add this flour, things are gonna start clumping up in here, which is good. Actually, it's not clumping up, which is even, even better, which means the oil is at a very, very nice temperature. So we're gonna pull that down a little bit because we definitely don't want this flour to burn. Um, and as this browns, we're just gonna keep doing this. Um, so there's like a really raw flower smell right now. I wish you could smell it, it's actually really nice. Um, but we want that to go away. Uh, we want to cook, cook this flour out uh, for at least a couple of minutes. Um, I would say maybe three to four minutes uh, at the bare minimum. Uh, especially if this is, okay, this is quite hot. Um, as you can see, it's starting to brown very, very quickly. So I'm gonna turn the flame down a bit. I keep stirring that. Down all the way, I guess. Keep, keep stirring that. And as this cooks out, maybe there's a light here I can use. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Who would have? Ow. Hot oil. Careful. Very, very careful. Let me just switch it off for a second. So the stirring is basically to make sure that it doesn't stick to anything uh, and it just keeps moving. Uh, so I, I have turned the flame off because this is browning very, very quickly. So my three to four minutes, given how hot it was, turned into a minute, um, which is still absolutely fine. Um, I can still smell that raw kind of flower smell though, so I'm gonna keep doing this till that smell is gone. Because uh, that's sort of what you want, right? You want the you want the raw taste of that flower to go away and you want it to give it like a nice savory uh, mouthfeel. By the way, I would ideally be doing this in that pot, but I'm using it for the potatoes, and I need to I need to heat up some oil later on in there because um, we're going to be deep frying stuff, which is like my second favorite kind of food. Another good way to do this is just to use a whisk, um, but I, this pot is quite deep, and I don't have a whisk that's deep enough to actually reach all the way. I'm just using the kind of lengthiest uh, thing I have. I think that one is a bit longer, but it's steel and will end up scratching the bottom of this pot, which I do not want to do, because this was a present from my father-in-law. Um, he was a really nice man. So as you can see, this is starting to thicken up really nicely. Like the oil and the flour is starting to become one. When you, when you, when you kind of do trails of it, you can see less of the, the grainy bits. This is turning more into a uh, a sauce as we go along, which is exactly what we want. Um, the chilies are still frying, the spices are still frying, uh, adding their kind of really nice um, flavor to this. So this is sort of what's gonna make it like really nice and tangy. And um, there are other bits and pops you can add to this to make it tangy. Um, there's a flour in, in India called kokum that you could use, you could use pomegranate seeds. Um, there are various kind of bits and bobs you can do to add like a more savory, more tangy mouthfeel to this. Um, but this is going to be a very, very big uh, contributor in that space. Always good to use a heavy bottom pot when you're doing stuff like this. Because um, it, like, this is very, very hot and it has retained the heat um, all along. Because you can still see bits and bobs bubbling. Um, which is exactly what you need um, for a recipe like this. Um, that one's a really heavy bottom pot as well. It's cast iron, so you know it, it, it takes a while to get up to temperature, but when it does, it just stays there for quite a bit, which is very handy. I think we're, yeah, we're about at the three minute mark for this, um, or two minute mark, really. I'm not really sure, but I think this is good enough for me. Like, I don't see any of the grainy bits of the flour anymore. This is turned into a nice liquidy thing. 
Then when I've done the hob back on, on the lowest setting, I'm going to go in with my tomato paste. I'm just going to use the entire lot of this because what else am I going to do to use it for? I've got it set up for my potatoes because um, as soon as that 15 minutes is up I'm going to give it like a nice uh, drain this is very very nice so this is now seizing up obviously because the addition of more moisture the, the, the structure has changed completely there's uh, less moisture rather um, so as I add in I'm gonna keep stirring that actually before I before I add anything else into the mix just because I want the paste to cook out uh, I might add a bit of water here though um, just because that looks a little bit sad and it might start to burn which I do not want um, this is a really good um, like in Indian cooking you always deglaze with water you never use like um, uh, beer or wine or anything like that like you would in French cooking or Italian cooking. Uh, I mean, you could. It just might just make it taste better, if anything. Um, but I don't. Um, I'm happy to stick with water because that's, that's what my mom taught me. And she makes delicious food. So again, you can smell like a really kind of nice raw tomato smell and I want that to go away. So the base for this is quite a lot of hard work, as you can see. Um, but once you've got like the, once 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 this cooks out a little bit, uh, and we add the tomatoes in, and then we add a bit of water in, it's just basically gonna kind of reduce away um, till the vegetables become tender, and then that's it. That's it. That's all the work you need. It's not uh, any much harder than that. And the idea here is, don't want anything to stick. Don't want anything to burn because you're doing the dishes and fuck that, right? Ooh, I should really watch my language because I want the video to go out to as many people as, as, as possible. Okay, that looks good enough to me. And now we're gonna add the rest of Potatoes. Fill it up with one can of water. Give that a bit of a stir so it all gets to know each other. So this is still very, very thick, and I'm just gonna go in with another can of water. Because, so that is the, the consistency of the curry we're looking for. It's quite a watery um, affair, um, but it's really good. Uh, so now we're gonna add our remaining bits of seasoning. So we've got a uh, quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder. This is hot stuff and we've already got a few chilies in this so I'm not going to go too down on this uh, that uh, and definitely it's a good point to add a bit of salt you don't add too much because this will reduce and the flavor will intensify so you want to check what that will taste like um, you know after it actually starts coming to a boil and reducing and everything so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this to a boil um, and as soon as this comes to a boil uh, I'm going to add the rest of the veg in uh, and I'm just gonna let that simmer away um, till my potatoes are done and the rest of um, the meal is put together. Um, ooh, that's my good cookie. Um, 
and uh, yeah uh, this should come to the ball pretty quickly or a minute 11 for the segment which is quite a bit but you know it's a pretty heavy duty segment um, these vegetables have not been pre-cooked or anything like that um, like I said before you can use uh, pretty much whatever you want I had boiled the kettle because I didn't want the water to be cold when I went in but I stuck with cold water in the end and uh, now I'm waiting to pay the price um, like I said this is just like green beans potatoes carrots uh, a bit of broccoli I had kind of lying around in the fridge uh, you can do, you can use whatever you want, you can add a parsnip, uh, like I said, uh, suede, sweet potato, it's all really, really, really good additions. Uh, I'm going to add a bit more water to this, um, just because when I put the veg in, I want it to kind of stew in that uh, water, I don't want it to uh, kind of do that. So that's my potatoes as well, which is really handy. Cool, so that should come up to the boil. I'm gonna add a bit more water to this. I'm gonna add the rest of this veg in. I'm gonna give that a bit of a stir, and that's it. Uh, this is gonna take like 30 to maybe 45 minutes to really kind of do its magic. Uh, and then at the end, I'm just going to taste it for seasoning, and uh, that's the curry done. Uh, so I'm going to put a lid on it, uh, I'm going to deal with those potatoes, uh, make some rice, and then uh, come back to you. Uh, but we'll continue this segment.